All right, next question up. So what we are going to focus on, as always, is that question sentence. And so what we're trying to determine here is the climbing rate. So specifically here, if the return climb takes this long, we want to know what the rate of that climb is. So be specific. We want to know the climbing rate. So let's write that down. Nice and easy. So we want that climb rate. And so when we take a look at the information that's given to us, we see that it says a hiker descends into a canyon at 320 feet per hour for five hours and then climbs back out. Okay. So the first part, when we're descending into the canyon, we're going down 320 feet per hour. And this is going to be over five hours. Everyone define that distance that we are descending into the canyon for. What operation are we performing here? Multiplication, addition, subtraction, division. Which one are we going to use to find that? Yeah, not a lot of overthinking needed. Not much thinking at all. We know the formula. To get distance, you multiply the rate and the time together. So that's what we'll do. We're going to go ahead and do distance equals rate times time. So that's 320 multiplied by five hours. And once we do that, 320 times five is 1600. But we can go ahead and show that right over here. So multiplied by five, zero times five, two times five is 10, carry the one. And then we have three times five is 15, carry the one at 16. So we have 1600 feet. So if I go ahead and just erase that right over here, we can safely say that again, the distance that we covered is 1600 feet. This is important because guess what everybody? We are climbing back out. And that return climb, it, they say it took eight hours. So we can use that same formula, everybody. We can use the distance that we climbed is equal to the rate we climbed at times the time that we were climbing for. Everyone, pop quiz time. Number one, how much time does it take to climb out of the canyon? That's already given to us. That is going to be eight. Absolutely. So right here, we can plug in the eight nice and easy. Now here's the other question though. What's the distance? What is the distance that I'm plugging in? Who knows? What am I plugging in? So if you're saying 1600, absolutely correct. That is correct because remember, we descended into the canyon and then we climbed out. That was a return climb. So going down and then going right back to where we started, we can safely assume that it's the same distance. So that's going to be 1600. And there we are. Now we can finish this problem with one final move. And that final move is dividing both sides by eight. That's gonna give us the rate by itself. And that's gonna cancel out on the right side, giving to us rate equals 16 divided by eight, which is two, tacking those zeros along at the end. So that's going to be 200 feet per hour. That is our rate for the climb. And that is answer choice C. All right, next up with the new question here, the new question sentence that we're going to start off with says, if there are 70 books on a shelf, how many are nonfiction? Let's read that just one more time. If there are 70 books on a shelf, how many are nonfiction? So when we write that down, we have 70 books compared with blank nonfiction. Fiction. That's very important. I'm going to highlight that one more time before we continue. Again, it says 70 books. How many are non fiction? Okay. Next up, we're going to read the information and it says at a library, six out of every 20 books are fiction. Read that again. Six out of every 20 books are fiction. What does that mean? That means that I have six compared with 20, but you have to understand what each of the six and 20 represent. Everyone, 
if we say that six out of every 20 are fiction, that means that six is the number of fiction books. 20 is the total number. Again, just like 70 books on a shelf, that's 70 total books. Six out of every 20 books, that means that the total of the ratio is 20. Why am I being so cautious around this specific part? It's because if you were to put 20 here, which is the right way to put 20, if you were to put 20 here, but you put six in here, everyone, the problem with that is that you wouldn't be comparing the same things in the same way for the proportion. If you put six here, six is for fiction books, not nonfiction. See, that's the big problem. That is the big problem. So with that said, let me get the six out of the way for fiction. And let's figure out the right number to place in here. Help me out, everyone. If there are 20 total books and six of them are fiction, what part, what number would represent the nonfiction in the ratio? That would be 14. Absolutely. Watch and learn. Watch and see. 20 total minus 6 fiction books will give us 14 non-fiction. So that's what's going to go right here. Again, non-fiction. And that's what will be allowed to place right here. Non-fiction. Boom. Again, it's all about comparing the same things in the same way. Because once we have that set up, let's bring this over, make it a little smaller, throw it in the corner. And what I'll do is now write my proportion. I'll just write an X right there. 70 over 20 equals X over 14. 70 over 20 equals X over 14. And what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and simplify. 70 and 20 are both divisible by 10. So I'm going to give myself an easy time right away by just canceling out those zeros by dividing by 10. So we have 7 over 2 equals x over 14. Here I can cross multiply and divide if I'd like to, but I can actually get the same correct answer by just doing this, comparing the same things in the same way. 2 goes into 14 seven times. That's times 7. So going left to right, that's times seven. So I'll do the same thing up top. Seven times seven. What is that gonna be, everybody? Seven times seven gives me 49. And there we go. That is 49 non-fiction books. Making the correct answer in this problem, answer choice C, 49. And there we go. All right, so let's take care of this question here where it says, evaluate this expression, 3x plus 2y minus 5, when x equals 4 and y equals 3. So what this means, everyone, is the first thing we want to do is, hey, look, x equals 4, I'll replace x with 4. And then over here, y is 3, I'll just go ahead and replace y with 3. That's all I'll do at first. And what that gives me is 3 multiplied by four plus two multiplied by y, which is three minus five. Everyone, due to the order of operations, am I going to subtract, add, or multiply first? Yeah, order of operations is gonna say multiply all day. So we're gonna begin by performing the three times four, giving us 12, two times three, which is six, and then five right there at the end. And here we go. We can simply go ahead and do 12 plus six minus five, which would be 18 minus five, which is 13. Or you can just do six minus five first to give you one, and 12 plus one is still going to be 13. And there's our correct answer, my party people. There it is. Answer choice B is correct.